guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. We're moving on to part six in our series on Native Instruments Reactors Massive. And in this part, we're going to come down here to this modulation section and start figuring out what's what. Modulation is really kind of the engine of, uh, of Massive, and it is responsible for what makes Massive so unique. So when we move down here, we see what looks to be a step sequencer with uh, data in it very similar to the sequencer tracks that we have here below. Now these six sequencer tracks all play samples. In the case of the modulation lanes, we only have modulation data that we're storing in, the, in, those, uh, uh, in these sequencer lanes. If you look over here, we have mod 1, 2, and 3. Now these are three independent modulation sources. So you can store different patterns in each one of these in the same way that we discussed earlier uh, in edit modes. You can just draw them in, you can use these uh, edit modes up here to manipulate them. Uh, but basically it means that you have three different options. You actually have four because another modulation source is the step velocity of your various sequencer tracks. We'll get into that later. But uh, very quickly, these, uh, these controls here allow you to loop certain segments of the sequencer and modulation tracks, so the first 16 steps here, the second 16 steps, and then of course all of it. It becomes pretty useful when there's one particular part of uh, the sequence that you want to use and you want that to loop over. It's just kind of a handy shortcut. There's also a half tempo button which allows you to uh, divide the tempo, to slow down the tempo by half, and that's the tempo only of this modulation lane, now, all of these modulation lanes. So it means that the modulation will move at half the speed uh, of the rest of the ensemble or the rest of the sequencer tracks. But enough talk, let's start listening to, to uh, what this can do. And to that end, you guys probably can predict what I'm going to do here, which is turn off all but one sequencer track so we can hear exactly what's going on and not be too confused by the other sounds. So here's what we have with no modulation. This is our hi-hat track. It's a very simple hi-hat pattern. And we see here that this is the, the sample that's being played. Each time this, this uh, yellow bar activates a sample, it's this sample here. Now, we have these modulation lines up here. And we have a number of different modulatable parameters. Anytime you see one of these gray boxes, it means that Massive's inviting you to modulate that particular parameter. And our handy information tooltip tells us that uh, what exactly these parameters are. But I'm going to break this down for you. This column here on the left is one of the most powerful parameters in Massive, and it makes Massive really cool. It's a sample select parameter. And what the sample select parameter does is it chooses among a whole host of samples that Reactor has for that particular track. So now we have. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I've moved up a track, but let's move back down to this hi-hat track, which is what we were using. We have a sample called Boss HH, which is hi-hat, it's a wave sample. Now if we move this, if we click and drag on this, and move it down, for example, to 69, it switches to a different sample, which is now a ride, a, a ride sample. It's very simple, we just click and drag up and down, and we get different, different kinds of samples that we're using. And just listen to how, how kind of versatile that is, because it doesn't really ask you to go into a file system and find the exact sample you want, although we can do that, and I'll show you how to do that later. But this just selects the samples that we want this sequencer track to trigger. Below here is the uh, modulation source selector. And that right now, when it's gray, it means we don't have anything selected. We're, it's, we're not modulating at all. But below this is a sample select modulation parameter. And what this allows you to do, you can probably figure this out, is to modulate the sample that's being played on this sequencer track. So you're actually using modulation data to switch between various samples. Let me show you how this is done. So up here we have our mod 2 modulation track. And this has a bunch of modulation data that we want to come down here and have this sequencer track start accepting. So I'm going to click on this gray box and I'm going to drag up until I get this green this green bar which indicates that it's now taking this this modulation data from this 
this lane, this green lane. Now if I start it, I'm not hearing anything. It's not modulating it. The reason why is that we haven't, we haven't uh, added any modulation depth to the mod depth uh, parameter down here. Now if I think, of, I think that's a modulation depth is what it's called. Sample select modulation amount. Okay, so once we start to raise this, let's raise it up to 12. Now it's going to look up to this green lane and it's going to say, okay, how should I change the samples down here as I'm cycling through this sequencer track? And now keep your eye on this sequencer or this uh, sample display. It'll start changing. Now in this case, what's happening is that for some of the, for some of the steps it's selecting, there's not a sample there. And this has to do with the sample map that's underneath all of this. So you kind of have to, to tweak around and find out what modulation amount is going to give you the best kind of selection of different samples that you're cycling through. And sometimes it's very subtle changes. So now we have a sam different sample being selected on most every hit, not quite every one. And by the way, this can also be modulated negatively. So if you pull down, now you're going to negative modulation territory, Oops. and it's moving the, uh, the sample selection is cycling through a different portion of the sample map. Pretty cool, really. I mean, because now you're starting to pull in these different uh, kind of chance samples that, that you might not have come up with on your own, and you can develop some really cool patterns that you wouldn't have thought of. Let's turn this modulation back off and go back to our original sample. And now we'll move over to kind of what's more a, a more conventional type of modulation, which is, of course is pitch modulation. Under this, we have this transpose bar, or this transpose label, it means that we can, on the top parameter, start transposing this up by semitones, and consequently also transpose it down. <laughs> These samples are so nice. I mean, they're just so complex and deep. So say for example we leave that uh, at zero, just leave it at our, our normal transposition, it's not transposed at all, but we also come back here and select our green lane to start modulating the pitch. And once again we have to dial in a modulation amount. And you hear now that the pitch of that hat is changing through the course of the sequence. Now this is obvious, uh, more obvious with um, kind of more timbral sounds where it's actually changing the, the sound of like a flute or a horn or something. But you, you can come up with all sorts of cool kind of patterns. So suffice it to say that this uh, pan control does the same thing. It, it accepts the modulation from, uh, from the modulation lanes and then it will use that to pan back and forth in the stereo spectrum. But one more quick thing I want to show you, which I think is really one of the most powerful parameters here, is that you have control not only over the individual tracks, the individual uh, modulation of the individual samples and pitches of each sample, but there is in fact a global sample select modulation parameter here and a global transposition parameter. The, what makes this cool is that it basically allows you to create completely different kits dynamically. So say for example, here we have uh, our sample select modulation. This is our full kit. But now if we come over here in this global sample select, we do the same thing that we did with this uh, hi-hat parameter down here, the hi-hat uh, sequencer track. Now all of a sudden, <laughs> God, I mean, it's totally out there. And you notice that it's it's control it's cycling through different samples on all of these different sequencer tracks, because this modulation data is controlling all of this. And the same goes for the pitch transposition. We can do the same thing, right? So we can really dial it in and just start getting some really out there sounds. And now it's transposing the entire kit. It's almost a funhouse sound. <laughs> 
So there you have it. This is, in my view, this portion here is really the most powerful parameter. I could be wrong on this because I'm kind of just learning as you are. But this is really something that allows you to create interesting out there patterns and switch between them. A good use for this, for example, is to do something that I did in uh, the last of the new school videos, which is set it up in your DAW and just start kind of cycling through and recording different loops. And chances are you'll come up with something very usable and that no one else has. That's the other thing that's cool about this is that uh, you can come up with really kind of unique combinations, things that you're not going to get out of your conscious mind. In any case, so we started in on this modulation parameter, on this modulation section. Now you know how to modulate these different parameters. And uh, it's just fun to get in there and start turning knobs and assigning different um, mod lanes to uh, different parameters. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say before I go is that there, there is a yellow modulation um, color. And what that is is lane velocity. So each of these hits, the higher the velocity, the more uh, modulation will occur depending on whether you select positive or negative modulation here. I don't know why. It took me a while to figure this out. It's obvious. It's pretty obvious, but because I, I didn't see it as a modulation lane up here, it kind of confused me. Anyway, I'll be back in touch uh, real soon, and we'll go back through. We'll finish off this modulation section with these parameters over here, and then we'll move down into the sequencer tracks themselves and cover some other little goodies that uh, we haven't gone through yet. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.